Hello everybody, I am Jarrett Ross, a genie vlogger, and welcome back to another Professional Genealogist Reacts. On today's video, I'll be reacting to Top Gear and the Grand Tour's Jeremy Clarkson begins his search from Who Do You Think You Are? Now, I am really excited to start doing some Who Do You Think You Are videos. I actually didn't really realize that Who Do You Think You Are uh, from Britain, the BBC version, has a whole YouTube channel. So I'm really hoping that I don't get any copyright strikes for this, even though it is fair use. Um, I have had issues with some other shows, uh, like Finding Your Roots. I did some reactions to just their promos, and all of those basically got copyright claimed. Which is why you never saw any other Finding Your Roots reactions for those who were really hoping for those. It just takes too much time to have it copyright or you know have a copyright strike and then you know try to dispute it and then the claim goes down. So it just you know doesn't always work out. So I'm hoping that this will work out. Um, and I'm it looks like on their YouTube channel they basically have the episodes broken up into about six or seven pieces. I don't know if it's the entire episode or just kind of big chunks, but I'm kind of hoping that I'll basically be able to react to a lot of these. And a lot of my reactions have mostly dealt with DNA. And I always talk about, well, it's the genealogy that really lets you figure out what your true ancestry is, because with your DNA, it's just telling you where your DNA is coming from, but that's only part of your ancestral background. Um, because you only get 50% of your DNA from your mom and 50% of DNA from your dad. And there's a whole other 50% from both of them that you're missing. So when you do those genetic admixtures, it's not telling you everything. But doing genealogy does. So who do you think you are does real deep dives into the genealogy. They basically have a celebrity go and do genealogy research. Or not necessarily research themselves, but they'll go to different places, meet with genealogists or historians who then help them in discovering their family history. So we're going to start with Jeremy Clarkson's, and this will be the part one of it. Um, so I'm really excited. I will say this will be some of the first videos where I may have seen some of these in the past. Well, I guess there are videos I've already done like that. But I have watched a lot of BBC Who Do You Think You Are starting all the way back in like 2009. Um and then, you know, I've watched so many of them. So it's very likely I may have seen some of these and just don't remember them. But I'm going to try to watch ones that I haven't seen before. So that's a whole lot being said. But before we jump right into the video, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Really does help me out. Also, be sure to subscribe and click that bell so you get notifications on future videos. But now all of that has been said. Let's go ahead and jump into the video. I think it's engineering history I like most of all, because I am so useless with my hands. Most of the books here and all over the house are all about old machines. Because if you found out that you were a descendant of Telford or Stevenson or Brunel or any of the great engineers or anyone great and that must be quite a thrill and i think once you get involved in this it becomes like a detective story genealogy is very much like a detective story and it's crazy for me because it's literally become an actual detective story i've actually i solve crime now with genealogy i can see that it would become very addictive very give me a quiet sense of pride i think to think that same blood as somebody who did something amazing but what's funny is for you know he's saying if he has the same blood as someone who did something amazing but there's probably a lot of relatives of his that he doesn't know are relatives or they don't know that they're relatives of his that if they were to find that out they'd probably be like oh that's so cool i have jeremy clarkson as a cousin i'm related to somebody who's done something amazing <laughs> That's pretty cool. <laughs> of course, Jeremy Clarkson would have some Jeremy dune Clarkson buggies like that. In the Cotswolds, or go-karts. For generations, his family came from Yorkshire. A hidden history that he knows little about. Behind these faded snapshots lies a remarkable story. Jeremy will have to go on a journey into... A That's a family tree. It's gotta be a family tree. Rolled up like that, it's gotta be a family tree. 
This is it. This is where I came from. That's a pretty good place to start. I'm sure that's just, you know, either his mom's side or his dad's side. I doubt that it's both sides of his family, but it's possible. The family history expert has researched and drawn up Jeremy's family tree. I think a lot of people think when they look into their family trees that it's going to be William the Conqueror, Warwick the Kingmaker, John of Gaunt, and then, you know, look, it's me, so look how I'm descended from royalty. <clears throat> Whereas this, I think, is more, more the reality of it. Although that is a reality that a lot of people have that royal history, even if you can't find it and prove it through, D uh, well, not DNA, but through the paper trail or DNA or both. If you, you know, if, if you have that possibility or most people have that possibility of being related to royalty in some sort of way, it's just a matter of figuring it out. Um, especially if you look into the idea of pedigree collapse, which I'm not going to get into. That's probably like a whole nother video to look into. I'm sure there's videos from other people about pedigree collapse. I mean, on my dad's side, there is... There's absolutely nothing. Oh, so this is... So he's the base of the tree. You take the clerks and name back. Laborer, laborer. Show it. Master Taylor. Ooh. They're all from within a few miles of one another, this lot. You see, he married a girl from Tickhill, who then produced a load of children who lived in Tickhill. He produced my grandfather, who lived in Tickhill. He produced my dad, who lived in Tickhill. There's one of them here, went to Castleford. That must be 15 miles away. Not exactly Scott of the Antarctic, but it was a start. <laughs> 200 years of interbreeding, I'm surprised I haven't got one eye. The family tree shows how Jeremy's ancestors' lives changed as Britain moved into the period that most fascinates him, the Industrial Revolution. Agricultural labour, agricultural labourer, farmer. And then look, colliery carpenters, the mines were coming on stream. They weren't even clever enough to actually go down the pit. Now, my mum's side, <clears throat> well, that's kind of more interesting. Yep. Interesting. John Kilner, the glass bottle manufacturer. I think they did the Kilner jar, you know? That, um, hmm. Yeah, that's uh, the, the, with the, like, the snap lid, right? Um, it's like you put the lid on, you snap it, and it's got the seal. Or is it... They, it's yeah. A, and this is the proper one, yeah. right? because they're glass, but they've got sort of a seal on them. And then you yeah, exactly, and you, like, click it, down. snap it. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Cool that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. He was talking about being related to engineers. I mean, I imagine coming up with something like this, that's technically engineering. I mean, that's a patent. That's an invention. So his whole thing about engineers before kind of plays into that. That's kind of interesting. He was the killer who did those. I tell you what, it, where the story is, is good is, A... Look at the amount of people who were in it. B, it's a name that has survived. I mean, it's survived 150, more than 150 years, and people still refer to it as Kilner Jars. But also, what happened to it? Because it stopped with my great-grandmother. You see, in this generation, there are no glass bottle manufacturers, and all those lot, just about all of them, made glass bottles. But the question is, does this show the entire family tree in terms of the descendants? Because maybe it's just not showing the line of the family which kept up with the factory. Because that's a common thing with a lot of families, especially when there's a big business or some big thing to inherit. If there were a lot of kids, not all the kids are going to get something. Otherwise, what they get is basically nothing. Um, so, I mean, you do find families that might own, might have owned a business and it's been owned for generations and, you know, there's multiple cousins and different people who own it and are, you know, part owners, but there's probably a lot of people who, you know, they moved away. They didn't want to be part of that business. They wanted to do something else. And then their descendants wouldn't have been part of that business either. So he could just be part of that branch of the family. And there's a whole nother branch that still owns it, just not listed on the tree. I would, I would head straight for this guy, Kilner. Because he at least, it seems, did something other than harvest barley. All right, well, uh, that's the, the end of the first video. So it's kind of a, a good setup. It's basically, 
it's showing how to do genealogy research. You start with what you know, which for him, he's lucky because, um, well, it wasn't necessarily what he knew, but what had been drawn up for him by professional genealogists from what they'd said. So that's a great place to start, but that's how you start. You just start with what you know, and then you figure out, okay, well, where do I want to start going from here? And for him, he chose his ancestor, John Kilner. So I, I'm guessing that the subsequent episode or the subsequent parts of the episode will be going into that. Um, although usually with who do you think you are, they're usually going to do uh, multiple sides or multiple lines of the family, not just one. Um, although there have been some where they will just focus on one because it's just too interesting. Um, hopefully you all enjoyed it. Um, I'm really excited to see the rest of the series mostly just to see you know, what research do they do? That'll be the interesting part. You know, where are they going to go? What specialists are they going to look into? Um, and that's one thing I love about who do you think you are, especially because nowadays people uh, with the internet just research on the internet and then don't even think to try to find anything outside of the internet. Whereas when you watch a show like Who Do You Think You Are and you see them going to different places or talking to different specialists or even the, the records that the specialists will bring up, it's stuff that you will not find on Ancestry.com or, you know, often won't find on any of the other websites just because it's a specialty document that just hasn't been digitized by those websites. And you have to contact specific archives or go there. Not that you can really do that right now with all the COVID stuff going on, but... You know, it really does exemplify that thing. And plus, you get to see how cool it is to actually go to the places your ancestors were. And for a lot of them, they end up going to um, places that, you know, not just like the cities, but like the buildings or places where they live. So hopefully this one will go into all of that. But great setup so far. Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. It really does help me out. You can also click right about here if you'd like to subscribe. It's completely free to do so. You can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram at Genie Vlogger. I'm the Genie Vlogger. I will see you in my next video.